All right, so today I'm going to talk about positive reinforcement training um, and how it can be really key to helping manage some health practices, uh, my experience in the zoo, but also just with domestic pets in the household. Um, so it's important to note what is positive reinforcement training. So it's the addition of a reward following a desired behavior in reference to training. So the positive refers to adding to an animal's environment. So when you're talking about psychology behavior, positive is giving them something that they don't already have. And the reinforcement part means that it's strengthening the frequency of that behavior. Um, and then as you can see in this picture, those are all the different methods. Oh, this picture right here. Those are all the different methods um, of training, but a lot of times to make an animal's environment the most positive, you're going to go with positive reinforcement. Um, uses. So one of the big ones is transportation. So for cats and dogs, animals like that, that you need to put them in a crate or a carrier to take to the vet or to take along with you, um, you can use positive reinforcement to make that carrier a really positive environment for them. It's been noted that a lot of animals get really anxious when they need to go in their crate or carrier. Um, their stress pause when you have to chase them down, to pick them up, to put them in their carrier. So what you can do is you can use positive reinforcement to make that crate a really just enriching and good place for them to be in. That way they have no stress when they're going in there. They know what's expected. They know what's going to happen. Um, also for health checks and medical procedures, this is really big in the zoo industry. We use positive reinforcement so that we're able to do these things. Um, so that picture on the bottom left hand corner, this is an orangutan. I wasn't able to um, put in one of my pictures from the summer, but at the Indy Zoo, we have an orangutan named Kim, um, and she has a genetic respiratory problem, which causes her to have to have breathing treatments for her entire life. Um, so they've used positive reinforcement training so that she will actually take her breathing treatment on her own. It does not scare her. She sits there and takes it. She's actually really comfortable with it. Um, her her two-year-old baby Max plays with her while she does it. Um, we like to keep it out in the open so guests can see and we can answer questions. So by using positive reinforcement, they got her comfortable in that environment to that new, the medicine and the equipment that um, she's going to have to have. And so it's not a negative experience for her. Um, so we can help her get over that respiratory um, problem and just kind of manage that because of the positive reinforcement that her keepers have done. Um, also, you see in this bottom right hand corner, this tiger up here or down there, um, that's called target or point training. And what you do is you use positive reinforcement um, to kind of enhance them with that little, so they have a tennis ball and each uh, zoo is going to do it differently. What you do is you put your target or your pointer up there and you ask them to touch with whatever you're pointing. And so as you see, this keepers put it up high so that you can see the full underbody of this tiger. So that helps us make sure that there are no lacerations, there's no skin infections, um, there's no markings because in most zoos you're not going to be able, keepers can't just go in full body with their animals. That's not the environment they're used to. We don't want them to have that one-on-one -on -one contact. Um, and so this helps us just keep balance of our animals' uh, medical issues and making sure that everything looks good day to day. You do this every single day so that you can tell quickly when something's wrong with an animal. You notice, hey, I didn't see that yesterday. This is new. You know, what's going on? And you can quickly look into it. Now, would you... Um Back to the tiger. Yeah. Thing. You put the tennis ball up there, but what is their actual positive reinforcement? Are you giving them treats or something? So in this case, I'm not sure what they use at this zoo, but what we do at the Indy Zoo is, um, especially with our tigers and our lions, depends on what the um, environment is like outside. On really hot days, we would give them goat's milk popsicles okay. or blood popsicles. Mm -hmm. So, um, or they would get pieces of meat. So like okay. our target trainer that we had when we used the piece of meat, you actually stick it on the end of a rod and you put it up there. And then when they point, then they get it into their mouths. Okay. Okay. So there's a bunch of different variations yeah, yeah. of how you can do that. My assumption is they use some form of meat treat with this, with the tennis ball target. Um, so how it works is obviously step one, you need to choose what behavior you're wanting your animal to train for. Um, next, you're going to want to choose your reinforcer. So you want to make sure that this is something that your animal has a really strong affinity for and that they only receive this during that behavior. So if you are training, we'll say for um, crate training or something like that, you don't want to be giving it to them as their everyday treat. 
because then they're not going to have as strong of a desire to have that. So if you only use it while you're training, then they associate that treat with that behavior or with that crate. And then once the behavior is trained, anytime they go to the crate, you give it to them again as a continual reinforcer of that positive behavior. Um, the next step, you wanna choose a vocal or a visual cue or both. Sometimes you wanna choose one or the other. For some animals, they can get really confused if you give a hand signal and a vocal signal. Um, other animals just respond better to one or the other. You kinda of have to test out, figure out what's best uh, for your pet or whatever animal species you're working with. Um, then once you actually start the training, you present the cue. If the desired behavior occurs, that's when you're going to reward with the reinforcers that you've chosen. Um, and then you're gonna continue that until that behavior is learned. So whether it's a toy, like in this picture when he shakes her hand, down here she's gonna throw her ball, he gets to experience his toy, or you give him a treat. There's plenty of things that you can choose from. You just have to pick what does your animal like best, what do they respond to best. Um, some important things to note, you wanna make sure that this is completely optional. When you force training on any animal, it can be really frustrating. It can cause it to become a negative experience, and in the end, they're actually gonna become obstinate and want to oppose whatever you're trying to make them do, which ends up being the reverse of what you're trying to make happen in the first place. Um, next, any undesired behaviors, you just ignore. So when you use positive reinforcement, like I said, you're only positively reinforcing the desired behavior, you don't want to punish any negative behavior. By just completely ignoring that behavior, they're eventually going to learn, In some animals it's sooner, um, and other animals it takes longer, but they're gonna learn that, hey, I don't get anything out of that behavior, what's the point in me doing it? Um, and then lastly, you really only wanna train one behavior at a time so as to not confuse your animal. If you're mixing all of these behaviors at once, they're gonna get really confused if you're using hand signals or vocal cues, they might start to mesh them together, and then you're not gonna get your desired outcome because they're really confused about what goes with what. Okay, questions about that? Why don't you go back to that first slide where you had, you know, the positive and negative thing? I mean, that's yeah. always, it's sometimes hard to uh, understand that because there's positive reinforcement, there's negative uh, reinforcement yes. down at the bottom, and then positive punishment and negative punishment. Like, if you ever take a psych course, they really get in on that and uh, so forth. Anybody have any questions about that? I mean, because zoo animals you can't really handle most of, you know, most of the time. Right. And you got to do all this stuff. Um, how about anybody experienced with clicker training in dogs? You guys have you ever, are you familiar with that? You know, and it, it, see if I can explain it right now. When you click, that means that's a promise of a treat to come sometime. Is that right? Mm -hmm. For those that are versed in clicker training, you, know, you can you connect uh, a treat with the clicker, and then after a while, you just have to click, and they're going you know, to respond to that, right? That's clicker training. Do they any anything like that in the zoo? Um, the dolphins tend to use clicker training, so they oh. do a mix just because of the echolocation. So oh. they're going to use the clicks because those are easy for them to hear. Okay. So like our marine mammals are going to usually do um, hand cues if they're underwater, mm -hmm. um, a mix of the two if they're if your keeper is above water. Okay. Yeah, things like that. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Let's give her a round of applause, and then.